Hey, this is Colin Costello, West Coast Editor for Real360, and I am with the team of Before, During, and After, a new indie film that has just come out and is becoming the darling of the film festival circuit. You two are looking for a counselor and you're having trouble finding a match, is that right? This marriage is on thin ice. Your job slash homework is to not talk too much and have as much sex as possible. We can leave it there. A toast to Mr. and Mrs. Monroe. May you always be as in love as you are today. You guys have uh, kids? You have children, huh? When's the baby toast? We're pushing 40. What if we just got out of the way to see if it was meant to be? I thought we didn't want a baby. Uh, mint? No? Okay. I am sitting with its lead and writer and the brains behind it, Finnerty Steves, executive producer Elizabeth Krajewski, and associate producer Craig Duncan, who we also know from Cutter Studios. What's up, y'all? Hey, hey. What's up? <laughs> How goes it? Well, I just watched the film and it's very good. It's, uh, I, you know, we get films in all the time and people asking us to take a look at them. And, you know, we get scared, especially on the indie circuit, because you don't know a lot of times what you're getting into. And it, this was a pleasant getting into Finnerty. So I just want to say writer to writer, really good job on the script. I, I thought it was really intriguing. I really liked Jenny and I liked her journey. Oh, great. Thank you. Thanks for saying that. So um, I'm going to just get right into it. Um, so tell me about Jenny. Uh, how close is she to you? What inspired the script? Because I know you've been on, you know, some really great dramas. You're, you can be seen in Emmy nominated Bad Education. You were on Orange is the New Black, The Blacklist, The C Word. So uh, just kind of what was your journey coming here? Um. I, yeah, I, like I, I'm, I'm more, I've always considered myself an actor and I've never, um, I've never written anything. I've been obsessed with writing um, my whole life. I sort of, when I would jog, come up with stories, but I think I just had so much respect for writers that I just was afraid to do it. And I wasn't sure that I ever really had a story to tell um, until my seemingly perfect marriage blew apart. <laughs> and I was like, this might be worth telling. Um, <laughs> I'm not, it I'm was, not uh, with your marriage blowing apart, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's inspiration for sure. Yeah. yeah, even as it was happening, I don't know if it's because I'm an actor or what. You know, there was the part of me that knew that a lot of it was very funny, even though my heart was completely ripped out. There was just a, the observer part of you as an artist, or you know, any kind of artist really. You were just I was aware that. So how long did it take you? You finally sit down. You open up final draft. Um, how long does it take you to write it, a first draft? Um, because I wrote it in pieces, uh, I would say I, when I when I got pregnant, I sort of felt the click, the talk, the clock ticking. So it, it definitely like sped things up for me where I wanted to have a finished draft. I would say it was probably a year and a half from the time I first started writing, and then I had sort of something. Um, and then it took me a while to shape it and. Um, and, and to get the team together. <clears throat> but originally people were saying like, you should try to sell it. And then that's when I was like, well, people make these things. I had no idea what that meant, you know, this was <laughs> two years ago. Um, and uh, I asked, a, asked someone for like, uh, I, I basically reached out to somebody, uh, a friend of mine and, and someone said, you know, you need to sort of collect the nose and you know, start asking people if they're interested in, in sort of getting behind your film. And the very first person I asked was like, yes, I'm writing a check, I'll help you out. I love the story. And then I was like, oh God, that means I'm making it. You know, So that was the first, You know, it's, it's like I had to Google like, what is an LLC? <laughs> you know, Like all that stuff that filmmakers sort of, you know. Um, so I had my uh, crash course in filmmaking and I just had just, and I went to ask, I'd never asked for anything in my life. Um, and I've asked for more favors and more things in the last three years. You have no idea. I'm, oh, I'm sure you do. You're a filmmaker. Yeah. Um, and one of those people, uh, is, is Craig actually, cause I talked to Craig. Um, yeah, <laughs> never in a million years thinking that, uh, he would bring what he ended up bringing, but I just reached out as, um, uh, our, we have a, a mutual friend, Jamie, who was like, you know, Craig, cause I was like, I'd love to get a great editor involved. And, and you know, and he's like, you know, you, you know, Craig is, that's what he's doing now. And I was like, oh, that would be cool. So maybe I'll send him the script and. 
Elizabeth, how did you get involved? Um, I got involved through Craig. Craig, uh, okay. Craig he, is the he met our goal and he's like, I have a friend. And I was like, uh, sure. And, you know, we work in uh, mainly uh, advertising uh, commercial content. Um, and something that we've always looked to expand into, the editors have looked into, to expand into, and Craig and Finnerty, I won't, I won't mess up on the name, um, uh, he introduced me to her, and then we ended up having a meeting, and it was, I think at that point, Finnerty had already kind of gotten her directing team and production team in place, so we were able to kind of meet as a group, and I got to meet the directors and um, Indie Films, Katie, uh, the producer, and just see what it was about. Um, Craig said I would love her and of course I did and when you meet Finnerty she's one of those people that I'm not surprised that she was able to ask for a bunch of favors and pretty much everyone she asked said yep yep I'm on board let's go let's do this um, she's an amazing soul and like just such a, a spirit and um, collaborator and uh, just so enthusiastic about everything and the story is unique and fun and different and like just it was all the, just like it was just a good story so we we met through craig and then the rest was fate yeah, it's kind of funny like i i've known finnerty for gosh i was thinking about this today almost 30 years now <laughs> you know but we went through wow. a fairly long stretch where we were not in uh in touch and then another again you know and we you know, just not nothing bad, but just for whatever went our went our separate ways, and then, you know, our friends sort of brought us back together, and uh, Infinity sent me this script, and you know, being in my position in Elizabeth's position, I get a lot of scripts. I read nonstop. I get tons of things, and most of the stuff is like, you know, I just not willing to put all the time and energy and effort into it. But I remember, and when you know, Infinity said, "I'm going to send you the script," and I'm like, "Okay, I'll, like, yeah, fine, I'll read it, whatever." And it was absolutely fascinating. And I loved it. I loved the way she used time. I loved the way it was written. I had no idea <laughs> that it was so personal to her at that point because wow. I really didn't know. I knew she was married and had a child. And, you know, from by all accounts, life looked good. I, I didn't know about that whole stretch where everything went to shit. So, um, yeah. so anyway, yeah. And then, you know, what Elizabeth said, you know, Elizabeth probably was like, oh, great, another another Craig thing. Here we go. And oh, no. hey, my friend's got this script. It's really, really good. And I think it's something we might want to get involved with. But I did say it was completely Elizabeth's call. It was 100% up to her, um, especially because, you know, we're friends. I didn't want to be pushing. And Elizabeth read the script and met. And yeah, anyway, just sort of like catching up to the story there. <laughs> No, 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 this, this, because I was going to ask you too, because like Elizabeth said, you know, you think cutters, you think, and yeah, I know cutters is diversified. You have flavor and, you know, you got, you have your fingers in different things, but you know, full on films, you don't think about because there's the cutter studios name right there, which also makes sense because, you know, most people would say cutters, but it's cutters studio actually. Um, you know, what spoke to you about this script that you said, all right, we're going to do this. We are getting into making a film. Because that's a huge commitment, as you know, over doing a commercial or doing a, um, doing a music video or anything like that. It, it, it's, it really is apples and oranges in a lot of ways. Yeah, Very I'll let, I'll let Elizabeth answer that one because, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I'll be curious. Well, why, why did you say yes? I didn't think I was allowed to say no. Oh, okay, good. I'm doing my job. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally good. Um, I honestly, so I read the script and I loved it. And it's something that I, um, again, it's like I, when I, when I look at our talent and when I look at um, kind of love advertising, we love 30 second spots. We love all that. And some of them are amazing and some of them are just more, we're doing it and that, you know, it's great. And the clients are amazing. And it's so much fun. But when you really see an editor kind of, look at something and you see that spark in their eye or you see them kind of the, the wheels start turning in a different way. I just, I feel like being able to do all of this and ultimately we're storytellers. So whether it's in features, it's in podcasts, it's in 30 second spots, it's in branded content, whatever that is, they, when they can be inspired and they're well-rounded and they, they want to do all this and they keep their creative juices flowing in such different ways and challenge and having to figure out puzzles. And this was a puzzle it was a puzzle. It was an amazing puzzle. And like it, but it really, 
I think that once I brought the script to the editors and I talked to Scott Gibney and, and Peter, uh, Zach Weage, I got involved as well. It, like they just, they wanted to do it. They saw the script, they read the script, they loved it. They met Finnerty and they're like, we have to do this. We, we have to do this. We'll have to figure it out. And we didn't, in, you know, we didn't fully commit to it in a, we're going to spend the next three months. We knew that it would kind of work around other projects. Um, so which allowed us a little bit of flexibility, which Finnerty's team was so amazing about. Um, but when, you know, we, we allowed them to dig in and really, you know, for us to be able to commit to it and dig in, um, took a little longer, uh, because of those schedules. But again, everybody was so patient and we got there and, uh, it was, it was amazing. So well, one of the things that I've learned, you know, making that transition from advertising to film and going back and forth over the fence that I don't think a lot of advertising, and I'm going to generalize here just from my own experiences and even just what I went through. I don't think a lot of advertising creatives because in a lot of, a lot of times they'll take, you know, the footage that's been shot by, by the director from the director, go edit it themselves, whatever. I don't know if they really realize how critical the editor is to saving your ass. I mean, the editor is the third filmmaker when it comes to, you know, doing a long form piece. I mean, you know, I don't know what I would do without my editor. I mean, it, it, it's it's a whole different thing. And I mean, you guys obviously have the talent with the editors, but they're the third storyteller after the screenplay, after the writer and after the director, for sure. Absolutely. No doubt. Uh, if I'm allowed to say, I would say that I don't know that every creator, director, or creative or whatever does understand that until they have something good in their hands. Yeah, and I will, I will say that uh, this, on this particular film, because of, you know, I, I keep wanting to say, Finnerty, it's, I, I knew her as Jeannie long ago, so I, I, I always struggle <laughs> to say Finnerty. So, um, but I think because, as she said, that, you know, the, the script was sort of in pieces, which is something I really loved about it. And, and that's one of my favorite forms of narrative. I love, you know, when things are sort of, jumping about and, you know, in the Pulp Fiction type world. And sure. I love that. And <clears throat> this, and it's, so what happens though, is then you end up with all these pieces and it's, it's not like just this straight, you know, narrative. And so it had a million ways that this story could be told. And I think we did about 999,000 of them <laughs> before we landed on the right one. And the editors, Really brought a lot to the party, and Finnerty brought well, it to they the always party. always did, for sure. It was pretty I, amazing. Yeah, no, I mean, that's one of the things that I will say about the film. I thought it was well, really well cut. And that's not just me blowing smoke because I'm talking to cutters. No, I thought it was really, because it does jump around a lot. And, you know, you go, you don't even realize once they're starting to go through the separation and everything, that it's 15 years into the future until you get on until you're on that boat. Mm -hmm. And um, no, I, I thought that that was super interesting. Another super interesting thing I thought was uh, the idea of Jack Lures and Stephen Kunkin. Am I pronouncing that right? The directors, the co directors? Lewars and Kunkin. He had Jack Lewars. Jack Lewars and Stephen. So this is such a female driven film. I mean, it, it, it's empowering for a woman because you're seeing Jenny go on this journey. She's talking about being afraid. She's being afraid and there, boom, there she is at the end. You know, she's made this journey. Tell me your thoughts about getting two dudes to direct it. <laughs> Ooh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, Judy, tell us about that. What's your love story? And, yes. and now, quite frankly, two dudes to edit it. <laughs> So talking about <laughs> yeah. the, he asked the hard the, questions here. <laughs> I originally, I just always, I thought it would be a female director. Um, I just thought that's what, you know, um, and I have a good friend, Sonia, who was considering it and she helped me. She was wonderful. And she, the, basically the train left the station because of Sonia Gotti. Like she was able to help me and just the timing didn't work out with her projects and, um, so I was open, I was reaching out to other, to other friends and that when that didn't happen, cause I think that was just something, it was a, she, I had worked with her before on a short that she did that called Sunday, it was this beautiful film. And, um, and so I started reaching out to people at that point, once people realized that, that that wasn't going to work out, um, my friend, my good friend, Katie Hyde, uh, reached out to me and said, Finn, 
please do not feel pressure because we're good friends, but I love the script and I want to throw our hat in the ring for Jack and I, because her husband is Jack Delars, um, to either co-direct it or he would direct it, whatever, because I know you wanted a female director, so maybe we could discuss that because we love the script. Please do not feel pressure. We will help you in any way we can. I was like, okay, all right, this is good to know. I wasn't planning on that, but I'm open to it. And at that point, then another friend said, um, uh, have you, are you, do you definitely want a female director? I said, no, at this point, it's really because we're, it's going to probably end up being family or friends or someone that I know, because we don't have crazy money to pay some, you know, just somebody. Um, and so she said, well, you know, my good friend, Jen said, well, what about Steven? I know that's something he would be interested in. So they came to me separately, very different people, right? Elizabeth, like could not be more, like their style, everything about them is very, very different, but two incredible people two incredible talents, but brought like such very, very different things to the table. Um, and I was so torn because they both sort of made a strong fight for it to, to be considered. And um, everything I did, I researched like co-directors and everything said, do not do it, nightmare, unless they're married or brothers, sisters. Or the least of brothers. <laughs> and I, but I said, it's something about this felt right. They were, I was like, if there's any way I could convince them to work together. And they were both separately like, eh, you know, because it is such a director's medium. And um, I said, let's just meet for a drink. We'll meet for a drink. And we don't even have to talk about it, whatever. And so we, they, they hit it off. And like, you know, a drink and a half later, you know, we were talking about when we're going to shoot it. And Jack so you got like, them drunk. <laughs> got them drunk. Pretty, got much, them pretty much. Them. The next thing they know, they're on set together. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly what happened. Well done. Um, I'll have to do that they sometime. Do an exact. <laughs> I think they did such a great job and they brought such different things to the table. And, um, you know, uh, Jack is also an incredible colorist at Technicolor. He came with all of that. He's just an incredible, has a great eye. Um, and very smart. And then, then Steve has his own, like he's an, he's an actor and a photographer. So a lot of the stuff that he was helping me with was more about, you know, Jenny's journey as an actor, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, just sort of my way through the thing and was helping me keep track of like, then I know you're an emotional in the scene. But here is, we just had this moment, the audience needs you to be strong here. Like we need you to, you know, we, and so he was really good at helping me calibrate that. They just brought such, you know, and then Katie was, you know, the fourth. So the four of us were sort of the core team for pre-production through production. Got it. Um, yeah. Um, Got it. Uh, so Craig, I want to ask you something, going back to the cutters thing, because when people think of cutters, they think, you know, yeah, you have offices like we were talking offline here in L.A., but they, you know, cutters, they think Chicago. That's the first thing. And so I'm thinking I'm getting ready to watch a Chicago movie, and I watched a very New York movie. Um, what's the thinking about that? Did you ever consider shooting it in Shy, or is this such – because it's definitely a New York movie. There's no doubt about it. I mean, just the attitude, everything about it. it I'm, I used to live in Park Slope. It feels New York. It's, it feels authentic. Yeah. Um, talk to me about that for a sec. Did Elizabeth write this question? I just want to be <laughs> – <laughs> um, How are you going to answer? I think that's a uh, – you know um, – it's a sort of a misconception about our company. You know, I mean, we did start in Chicago, been here for 40 years. It's, you know, hey, it's, it's great. It's an amazing brand. Uh, you know, the company has done, you know, incredible work. But, you know, we've been in New York for, what, seven years now? Is that correct? Seven years. We've been, you know, Detroit, Kansas City, Tokyo, mm -hmm. um, you know, and Los Angeles. And, you know, so, you know, as far as where we shot it, it really had nothing to do with like, is this, a, it was always a New York story. This was always a yeah. story. Um, it, this took place in New York, the whole thing, I think. And, you know, as, as in many movies, you know, New York becomes a character in and of itself because I mean, you can, you know, people think they can fake Vancouver and it can look like New York. No, it doesn't. It doesn't look like New York. It, you know, New York is New York, man. And, um, oh. Very yeah, true. so very but no, we have a very, very vibrant, very strong office in Soho in New York. Elizabeth heads up that office. We have great mm -hmm. editors. We have great finishing services. We have everything there. And um, so part of the, you know, what's been fun for me in this process is I think New York is finally getting its due a little bit, <laughs> you know, for all the time. Because, you know, it is, 
It is tough. Chicago overshadows the company. There's no question about that just because it's been around for so long. But, Absolutely. Um, you know, New York is uh, punching up right now and we'll see what happens. One day, hopefully, they'll think of us as a New York company. Well, yeah. And I mean, in all honesty, I mean, the way business is done now, you, you can't remain in just one place or you're going to get stagnant. You have to expand. You, yep. you just have to. So, Affinity. Uh, Anything in the script that you wish had made into the film made it into the film, but it didn't. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> we asked the hard questions. <laughs> oh no! So, oh. I mean, that's uh, right. great about Kevin. They were so patient because there were cer certain things that I felt were so important to the story. And, um, you know, Scott Gibney and Peter, I mean, the whole office was so supportive right there. I mean, it was amazing, but, um, but Scott and uh, Scott sat through most, I would say probably most of the work of us figuring out what the story was. Um, and we were able to sort of figure out what the emotional linearity of this versus like, you know, what is her actual journey and which, how does each memory like roll on top of each other? Mm -hmm. And um, that was super important. There were a couple there was, we had a, there was a couple of moments that I sort of kept fighting for. And what was great about Peter coming in later with fresh eyes is he didn't have the years of us doing that. So he was able to sort of see it a little clearer. Sure. And, um, uh, you know, Elizabeth, it was incredible. And was sort of like, we, we knew we were really close to finally bringing this home. And so Elizabeth sort of gave us this window where she was like, go guys, you guys, you know, bring it home. And at that point, um, we just had, to, and Peter was kind of like, this doesn't, this doesn't work. I'm like, it doesn't, does it? He's like, no, because if we go for, I'm like, you're right, you're right. So it was one of those things. And the, the team was so great. There was no ego. I mean, there was really no ego. That's what's incredible. And people would sort of no. fight for something. And if two or three out of the people were like, you know, I disagree, but, you know, but if, if it seemed like when more than one person was saying something, people would be like, okay, let's do it. We got to do it. Um, and one of those was the beginning of the film, which the, um, the, it used to start with a little a flashback of little Jenny and her dad. Um, and I thought that was going to set the tone for the film. It was going to launch it perfectly and let people know, understand the humor of, this, of the story and, you know, and, and sort of how Jenny sort of felt she was a scared person. But um, I think by starting with it, the first screening we did, people were super quiet. And I was like, what's happening? And, and people, and, I think it misled the audience to think like, oh, this is going to be a movie about a girl with an overprotective dad that messed her up. And I'm like, that's, we ultimately had to say, that's not what this is about. It's a part of what her life, but it's not what this movie is about. And it was so hard to cut that, but we did. And, um, and uh, so that used to be the first memory she had in the hallway. Mm. We, we had to let that go really hard, but it, it works so much better after that. Her first memory now is her wedding and, you know, and then it goes from there. So um, but that was really, really hard to cut. <laughs> no, I, I, I know how that is. So um, Craig and Elizabeth, now when this goes out next week, you said you're already reading scripts. You know you're going to get inundated with scripts. So uh, what, what's next for you guys? What are you looking for in a script? Like what makes, what sparks you to a script? Hmm. That's a really good question. Um, I'll let Elizabeth start with the answer because I don't have one quite yet, so I'll lie. <laughs> Thanks. Um, well, we've definitely had some, uh, have been approached about some shorts. Um, and it's, uh, um, which the thing that kind of in intrigues me is the Black Mirror, apocalyptic, any of those type of things I think are really intriguing and exciting. Um, we do have a short that we had worked on um, that's possibly going to be made into a feature, which would be really exciting. Um, and, but yeah, I, I mean, again, it, like the story, it's the story, the story, the story. Right. Um, so it's finding those things that you can relate to when you read the script, you can see it pop off the paper. Right. And like really feel it. And, and you know, as Craig says, when you're reading a script, it, like if it doesn't, if it doesn't, um, I mean, it's anyone, it's if you, as a reader, what, it, what are you responding to? So um, I'd love another story. I'd love another story from Finnerty. I want to see what she's writing next. We would definitely get involved in that. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, I love, I kind of love that like black mirror apocalyptic, like world is ending because it is right now and we might as well write about it. Right. Well, let, let's talk. I want, you said something really interesting and I hadn't even thought about that, but now you sparked it in my head. 
the whole idea of the shorts, because do you think the shorts are still worthwhile if they don't have something else behind it? Like this is more of a proof of concept for a feature, because I know uh, I have a couple of friends still in Chicago who are just pretty hell bent on just making shorts. And, you know, we've gotten into lengthy discussions, like, because now me living out here, I feel like, yeah, maybe the short just can't really exist as just the short all the time. It needs to, you know, because it is about trying to get something longer. What, what do you guys think about that? Um, well, that's interesting. I mean, I definitely, you know, love the idea of something like, um, I'm sure the film that Elizabeth referred to is the one, you know, I like the idea that it can be expanded. However, obviously shorts can be an incredible genre unto themselves. Sure. Sure. Um, you know, when we watch them, you know, I think, I think with, you know, Netflix and Amazon and all these streaming services, I think shorts are finding, finally finding their day, right? Because they can live and they can exist and, and people can watch them. And it's a great way for young filmmakers that don't have a lot of money to actually like put something together and, and show that you can do so. And I, I hope that they lead to the next film, right? And maybe it does finally lead to a feature. Um, what you said, I, I would hope people... Not that there's anything wrong with shorts, but I would think that, you know, the idea would be, okay, let's do some shorts. Let's get, you know, get some, you know, wind beneath our wings here. And then let's maybe do a full length feature film. And, sure. um, and that's in, you know, anyway, I, I definitely love feature films. I'm a massive film person. I do watch a lot of shorts, but um, I love the idea of things. You know, I remember Sling Blade was like the first thing I ever saw that was like a short which I loved. And I'm like, oh my God, they're going to kill it if they make it into a long movie. And then the long movie was incredible. You know, it was even yeah, better. Yeah, expanded yeah. On it. Same so, with Whiplash. Yeah. I mean, Whiplash yeah. was an amazing short. Yep. Um, so it, it's doing really well on the fest circuit right now. I saw uh, in your EPK, the two festivals that it's in. Any other festivals coming up that you know about yet or you know about and you can't say yet or... We just, um, they just announced, you know, we were uh, chosen to be at the, the closing night film. I'm sorry, I think I have a bad connection. I'm sorry. Um, at the closing night film at Dances with Films. Um, and, wow, and it was supposed to be at the, thank you. It was supposed to be at the Chinese Theater sure. uh, in Hollywood. So that was a little bit of a bummer when we found out that wasn't going to happen. You know? um, yeah. But they've, they've, they've maneuvered really well and they've come up with this really great festival. I, you know, there's, it's so hard because so many festivals were either, you know, canceled or forced to go online. And they, they were kind of brilliant in that they, they're doing more of a, like a live virtual screening as a, you know, so the mm -hmm. film isn't like a, like living on a little mini Netflix for, for 10 days. It's actually, just, sure. it's streamed at one time. So our, our streaming time is on September, Sunday, September 6th at 6.30 Pacific Standard, Pacific Standard Time. Um, and so we're having our, yeah, we're the closing night film. So that was really, oh, that was Congratulations on that. That's fantastic. Good job. Good job. And, uh, what is next for you since Elizabeth did bring it up? What's next? Yeah. What's next? Yeah. What's next? <laughs> no you know, pressure I, here. I will admit that this has been such a baby that I feel like I'm cheating on this movie with, you know, if I start to write something else, I have a few, I have two pilot ideas and a, and a screenwriter, a, a screenplay idea um that i have a bunch of notes on napkins and stuff um that i'm working on but um but yeah i i can't i'm really close to finally being able to really jump in i mean as an actor that's what's so great when you get a role you get to daydream about it really but this feels i i think because this needed so much nurturing um you know as a as a independent producer it just feels like that's taking up um so much of my brain <laughs> yeah um, and also being a mom and then you know there's a pandemic which is a little, you know, um, but yeah, I, I'm super excited. I have, I'm, I have a couple of, um, of ideas that I, I cannot wait to, to, to jump in. I have, like I said, I've got some, I still have my writing workshop that I, that I spit some stuff out and I'm ready to put it all together. Awesome. And what about for cutters? What's next on the front that you're really excited about? Wow. You know, we, um, we, we have just launched actually a, uh, we haven't really uh, done a lot of PR about it yet, but we have launched the content creation company that we've 
invested in. I can't say too much about it, but sure. um, it's something I'm very excited about. I know Elizabeth's excited about it because, you know, I mean, we love doing commercials. I think, you know, we've done, you know, a ton of great ones and, you know, they, they certainly pay the bills, but, you know, we also are seeing the, you know, the world of production and, you know, shifting and we want to be a part of it. So we've got several different scripts that are, you know, you know, in development and in, you know, that we're trying to, you know, pitch and, you know, obviously the COVID pandemic has uh, put a little bit of a wrench into that plan, but sure. uh, we're hoping to pick it up. But that's, that's something that's really exciting to me. Um, you know, I mean, I love what we do. I love our business. I'm, I, I, you know, I'm excited every day about it and feel very lucky, but you know, anything we can do to expand and grow and give our talent more opportunities to do different types of work and, uh, you know, flex the creative muscles. That's that's what I'm all about. I think that's what our company's all about. Well, I think that that's key to letting the creative flex their muscles because it does, when you, I, I call, I say to my wife all the time, I'm, it's like going to writer's gym because I'll write for Real360, but then I'll turn around and do a screenplay and then sometimes I'll still turn around and do advertising. And it all is different muscles mm -hmm. that you're using and they affect the other ones. So yeah, yeah. I think. That's great. Sure. Well, look, you guys, I wish you the best of luck with this film. It deserves to be seen. It's really well done. And uh, I hope it finds an audience and looks like it's on its way. So congrats to all three of you. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. Thank you, Colin. Appreciate it. Take care. Take care now.